Attention, please. A $50 reward will be paid for information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone caught stealing our speakers. If you accidentally pull a speaker loose, don't worry. Just turn it in. There is no charge, and we'll appreciate it. For sure, mister. Signore, signore, chi vuol visitare una meravigliosa isola? Messia Dam. A wonderful trip to the island. Would you like to see the botanical garden? Ah. You want to see the island? It's a wonderful island. Driver. Ah, signora, a beautiful trip to the island. And the boat ride is fantastic. You will enjoy it. I'm positive of it. Shall we go? Come, please. We go to the hotel and get your luggage and go. Only six persons. <laughs> Beautiful place, ladies and gentlemen. I think you're the first tourist on the island. At the end, I'm sure you'll thank me for it. Oh, Cora, why didn't you let Mrs. Callahan sit on the seat beside the driver? You know, it's much better for taking photos. You know very well that traveling and back makes me sick. I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot. Ah, oh, it's like an earthly parrot. I wouldn't mind shutting myself off from the world in a place like this. Yes, I had a lot of trouble persuading the Baron to take paying guests. But he needs the money for his research. Look. There's a penguicula vulgaria. I was under the impression they only grow in, in, in swamps. And that's a Darlingtonia californica. I've never seen one in Europe. Ooh, this island is a horticultural wonderland. I can't wait to talk to the Baron. My husband. 
The island seems to be deserted. Doesn't anyone other than the Baron live here? What? No, no one has since... Since what? Did something happen around here? Or does the Baron just like solitude? Yes, that is, I mean... You mean that there were some people on the island, and now they've all gone away? Well, no, Signore, no, not exactly. Uh, well, what happened to them? Well, there was a ridiculous vampire scare. Oh, driver, slow down, please slow down. How do you expect me to take good pictures when you're driving at this rate of speed? <laughs> Signore, believe me, he was all of a sudden right in front of me. I could not stop in time. Don't blame yourself, driver. What do you mean? I hit him. I know I did it. I could feel it. I saw what happened. He ran straight into the car like a blind man. Look at his face. I don't think he was killed by the car. I'd say he was scared to death. Uh, look, we can't leave him here in the middle of the road. Help me to move him. Don't bother yourself, Signore. He was my cook. Uh, my servant will take care of it. And, uh, look, Alfredo, I don't want you to feel responsible for the accident. He was suffering from an incurable illness. A while ago, he ran from the villa, hysterical, screaming. The accident put a merciful end to his suffering. Poor fellow. Please don't upset yourselves over this. It's been coming for a long time now. In spite of this dreadful accident, um, I welcome you to my villa. Uh, please. <laughs> Lovely orchids. Some specimens are from Africa and South America. Others I developed here. Beautiful, Baron. Yet you say they are not hybrids. No, uh, Mr. Julius Demarest, Baron, University of Michigan botanist. Well, Mr. Demarest, it's always nice to have a colleague visit me here. Welcome aboard. I like it here. Extraordinary that the specimens of flowers should grow in the No, Mr. Garden. Demarest, I don't think so. All the plants here are indigenous to the Why was it referring to the geographical latitudinal aspects? No. Uh, quite possibly you recall a series of experiments that a colleague of mine, Professor Richards of the University of Utah, performed last year in the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, the university and the government were generous. He did an exhaustive study and specifically concentrated on soil structure. But the soil here is rich in minerals. They promote rapid growth. Rich in minerals, but not in nitrogen. <laughs> what do you mean? I saw some cobra plants and a butterworts on the way up here, and insectivorous plants are flourish in soils poured in nitrogen, which they must obtain from their uh, victims, isn't that so, Baron? Yes. Yes, quite true. This way, please. Very lovely. Very lovely. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the villa. Let me welcome you to it. Oh.
so kind, uh, please follow. Right through here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh. Uh, follow me, please. I must ask you to refrain from handling the objects of art that are in this house. Here you'll find artworks dating back to the 4th and 5th century. There'll be time to see it all tomorrow. Um, you'd probably like to freshen up before dinner. You'll find rooms marked with your names. The entire villa, all of the gardens and some ancient ruins that are to be found on the grounds are all at your disposal. I hope you'll make my home your home. Uh, Mrs. Callahan? Mrs. Callahan, please, no photographs inside. Outside, it's all right. But inside, don't do it. This is not a museum. Thank you. Don't you think? Well, bet it's the villa you find so interesting. Are you sure it's not the driver you're so excited about? What do you mean? I mean that I'm sick of seeing my wife behaving like a... a... Like a what? Come on. Say it. Well? Are you afraid? Like a... Like a... Prostitute. What makes you think you're so wonderful? Just because I married you doesn't mean you own me. But, Cora, I only... Listen, my friend, I can still do what I want. Cora, I'm warning you. <laughs> <clears throat> Just be careful, or you'll really regret it. Well, hello. Your bags. Oh, very sweet. My husband will reward you later. It will not be necessary. Don't worry. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Oh! Good evening, Good evening Professor. Whatever you want. Thank you, sir. I took the liberty of lighting a fire because even though the days can be warm and semi-tropical, the nights are inclined to get quite tempestuous and very cold. I trust you will all find the food satisfactory and to your liking, even though you may find it unusual. Please sit down. Unusual? I'm afraid so. I'm quite unorthodox, Mrs. Callan. Uh, but don't be alarmed. I want you to know that everything you're about to eat was grown in my garden. Oh, really? I'm very fond of garden myself. Uh, I'm a vegetarian, Mrs. Callahan. But uh, sample your cucumber. What do you think? Mm. Is it good? Mm. Mm. Very good. Very good indeed. Say, it looks like a cucumber, but it tastes just like meat. Perfectly extraordinary. I hope you'll find the other mm. vegetables also to your liking. Oh, my Baron, how did you ever do it? A, a mutation, Mrs. Robinson. Seeking an improved flavor, I experimented with the process of irradiating the germ plasm with ultraviolet light. This developed varied mutations, and one of the mutations turned out to have a flavor quite similar to beef. Fortunately, the new species bred true. Uh, I see. Hmm. Fascinating. Simply fascinating. Oh, thank you. Oh, those mutations. They ghost shivers run up and down my spine. Why, Baron, you could make a fortune with this stuff if you put it on the market. Just think, dear, why you and I could grow our own steaks. 
Shut up, Jim, will you? Ooh. How old is the Villa Baron? The Villa? Oh, it's quite old. I acquired the Villa, Mr. Moss. By December. Oh, Please, this is not the man you saw this afternoon. Perhaps I should have told you. My fault, I'm sorry. This is his twin brother. He seems awfully calm for a man whose brother was killed just a few hours ago. The twins have been with me for years, Mr. Moss, and Baldi was fully aware of his brother's condition. No. I'm afraid his brother's death was more of a shock to all of you than it was to Baldi. He knew that death could come at any time and was prepared for it. Please, sit down, please. Can I have some more wine, Baron? Certainly, Mrs. Robertson. I assure you, my friends, that Baldi is perfectly harmless. He has no trace of his brother's illness. No, no. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of. You should get to know Baldi better. He knows every inch of the island and could make your mm -hmm. stay much more enjoyable. I hope you like the wine that's made here. Mm. Exactly what was wrong with Baldi's brother? I never saw such terrible marks. It was a rare tropical disease that had the doctors baffled too. Excuse me a minute, Baron. Surely. What's wrong with him? Let me tell you something, Baron. Baldi may seem harmless to you, but to me, he seems like he's out of somebody's knife. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be candid, as much as I love my work, I have no illusions about it. The world of nature is more than just beauty and sweet-smelling flowers. Nature can be ruthless and deadly. Are you referring to Darwin's theory, Baron, the so-called survival of the fittest? In part, Mr. Demarest, it's true that the jungle, like our human society, is a battleground. But what interests me more than the survival of the species is what I call a kind of interplay of nature. Uh, what sort of interplay, Baron? All kinds, Mr. Moss. I'll try to explain my ideas in layman's terms. Do you realize that we, all of us, as well as all other living creatures, are totally dependent for our existence on the lowly earthworms? True, true. Oh, slimy thing. You can't be serious, Baron. But it's a fact, Mrs. Robinson. Uh, without uh, the earthworm, plants would not be able to grow in the soil. Without plants, there would be no food for animals or man. The human race could not have evolved without the earthworm. Mm. There really is nothing more important. Uh, I always thought that earthworms were just good for fishing. <laughs> you should know about worms. Uh, speaking of fishing, if anybody's interested, the sea around the villa is full of fish and worms are available. And now that we have finished dinner, Baron, do you suppose... Uh, yes, of course. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you will allow me, I'd like to show you some of my specimens. Since I'm no lady, you go ahead with your little tour. Don't worry. I'll stay here and get drunk all by myself. Don't you think you've had enough? How much is enough, Jim? Do you know? Enough of what? You and all your book talk about nature. What do you stuff shirts know about nature? That's my game. I'll tell you about nature. That's I'm enough, sure. Cora. You're drunk. You better... Don't get away from me, you will. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, I think you're not quite yourself. I suggest you come to the kitchen with me. Baldi will give you some coffee. Will you excuse us for a moment? My wife, she 
doesn't hold her liquor very well, she... <laughs> Look at that plant. Oh, now that's odd. I've never... Don't touch that plant! I'm sorry. But one inch more, Mr. Robinson, and you'd regret it. Why is that? Is it poisonous? Well, not exactly. It's not uh, poisonous. It's a porcupine plant, my friends. But unlike the animal of the same name, it has the ability to throw its quills wherever it senses the enemy approaching. Uh, what happens if one of the quills should hit you, Baron? A temporary paralysis. Oh. Uh, for two hours, you'd be unable to move a muscle, somewhat similar to a general anesthetic. Oh, well then, I'm glad you stopped me when you did. <laughs> About my wife. Uh, she's all right. She's having coffee. She'll join you when she feels better. Oh, thanks, Baron. I'll just go and see how she's doing. Uh, do that. Well, I promise to show you some specimens. I've shown you carnivorous plants that exist in nature. None of these are my creations. They are simply transplantations. Now I'd like to show you something different. Oh, amazing. Is this a new species, Baron? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Demarest. I call it agave muscipula, a product of my own laboratory. Agave, century plant, muscipula. Baron, you've crossed the century plant with the Venus flytrap. Very good, Mr. Demarest. You are perfectly correct. But how did you do it? I bombarded the germ plasm of the seed with x-rays a number of times. This process increased the natural rate of mutation a thousandfold. Finally, after hundreds of unsuccessful mutations, I was fortunate enough to be able to produce the plant you see here. You know, that's all Greek to me. <laughs> Is this one a killer? <sighs> Carnivore is the word, Mr. Moss. Not killer. Carnivore? Do you mean that plant actually eats meat? Yes, Miss Christensen. You will notice the aroma of the blossoms. Smell it. Oh, it smells like fresh meat. Exactly. What's more, it has an odor that's particularly attractive to small animals. Astounding and incredible accomplishment, Baron. You're very kind, Mr. Demers. Too kind. <laughs> and now I'd like to show you agave muscipula in action. Uh, Baldi, uh, would you bring me a mouse, please? I don't think I'm going to like this. All in the interest of science, Miss Christensen. Nowhere in the world could you witness such a demonstration. Would you rather go to your room? No, I'll stick it out. If the rest of you are going to. Say your prayers, Mousy. <laughs> Maybe the mouse will run away. Oh, no. <laughs> no, my little friend won't run away. He's hungry. He hasn't been fed in quite a while. Now watch. The smell would be irresistible. Say oh. oh. hey, that's better than a cat. <laughs> oh, I've never seen anything like this. I, I, I'm glad you waited until after we ate. To show us your specimens, Baron. You're right about nature. It can be terrible. And man can make it even more so. 
Don't you agree with me, Baron? Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry if I've upset any of you by my demonstration. I didn't mean uh, to. Please forgive me. Uh, but let me show you, please, some very unusual flowers. <laughs> Details wouldn't interest the others, Baron, but you must tell me about your creation, the agave muscipula. Why don't you join me in my study for a brain? Oh, yes, indeed. Would you young people excuse us? We are going to have a kind of scientific gossip. Sure, Baron. Uh, thank you. Uh, good night, Mr. Denver. Not only will I tell you, I'll show you photographs of the hybrid and the early mutations. I have slides of the species in all of these experimental stages. Oh, but well, I consider this a very great honor indeed, Baron. I do appreciate your taking me into your confidence like this. I can't say I'm very sleepy. You? No, I'm not. I'm afraid I'll have nightmares when I do fall asleep. That awful plant and the accident this morning. That statue, it represents the Hindu god Siva. You know what it's called? No. What? The Destroyer. Really, Mr. Moss? I don't see... It's just something I remembered from school. We study statues as well as buildings. Uh, please, do me two favors, will you? All right. If I can. One, call me David. Agreed. If you'll call me Beth. With pleasure, Beth. Two, uh, step outside with me for a breath of fresh air. Oh, fine. I need some. of yourself in Rome and now you're drunk again. Everybody has his own way of enjoying himself. The Baron with his plants that eat mice. And you? Just like to be stupid. Cora, listen, let's cut out all this nonsense. Oh, don't start again. Otherwise I'll... Otherwise you'll what? Let's not argue anymore. I'm tired. I should never allow myself to be talked into these holidays. They always end in fiascos. Cora, for heaven's sake, leave the window open. You know I like fresh air in the room. But the wind's rising. Maybe there'll be a storm. Then leave it open a little. Otherwise, we'll suffocate in here. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. For an architect, I have a wild imagination, they say. But... What is it, David? Look, do me one more favor, will you? That makes number three. When you go up to your room, lock your door. Windows, too. Whatever is going on. Even if it's only my imagination. Beth, it won't hurt you to play things safe. Getting late. I 
think... I'll go up to my room now. Aren't you coming in? Uh, I think I'll stay out here for another smoke. Remember what I said, okay? Yes, I will. Good night, David. Good night. Cigarettes. Do you have any? Yes, of course. Thank you. I almost had a nicotine fit. And Mr. Robinson? Does he know I'm out wandering about? <laughs> no, not Jim. He sleeps like the dead. That's convenient, isn't it? It's very cold. So this is where you keep your plants, Baron? A few of them, Mrs. Robinson. Working out here all by yourself, don't you ever feel lonely, Baron? No, never lonely. I have the means and freedom to do my work. Never lonely. Don't touch that. Mrs. Robinson. if you misunderstood me. Yes, I guess I must have. I'm sorry. But you were about to touch my giant gardenias. It took me years to develop these. Many years. They're extremely delicate. Why, a touch of your finger would have killed one of them. Giant gardenias. That's right, Very gardenias. delicate giant gardenias. Yes, Mrs. Robinson. I think I'll go to bed. That's a good idea. There's a tour of the garden early in the morning. Thanks for the cigarette. <laughs> well, 
big shy are you? You boys feeling fine? My friends, you understand. <laughs> Don't you?
It's a beautiful day. Oh, yes, it's beautiful. We have many such days, Mr. Demarest. Look there. It didn't take long for Mr. Robinson to use the worms we were talking about yesterday. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. We thought you were still asleep. Oh, delightful morning. Yes, we were just saying the same thing. Uh, I went out to fish. Uh, caught myself quite a few, as you can see. It should be a tasty little thing. Isn't Cora with you? Or she should be down by now. No, I haven't seen her. Uh, I couldn't sleep. Uh, insomnia, I guess. So I took advantage of your advice, Baron. Excuse me if it wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, my apologies, but I used your pole and other equipment. <laughs> well, don't worry about it. Why don't you go and bring your wife down to breakfast? Take the fish to the kitchen. Baldi will prepare it for you. Oh, oh, thank you. Mrs. Callan, we're going into breakfast. I'll be back in a little while. A moment will do it. My bag isn't that antique car. I need it today. Get up, Cora. We're going to have breakfast in a minute. Quit playing games. I know you're awake. You never sleep this late, Cora. Oh, my God. Cora. room and he had no business there. Yes, Baron, I'm sure he knew one. No question about it, Baron. He's guilty. A serious accusation, Mrs. Cunningham. <laughs> it's time for accusations, wouldn't you say, Baron? Two people died here last night. Whose arms did they die in? Mr. Moss, I don't know what you mean. Oh? We could ask Baldi's brother. But he's dead, too. Isn't he? An accident, Mr. Moss. The cook was killed by the car that brought you. If that's true, what about Cora Robinson and the driver? Uh, were their deaths also accidental? Mr. Moss, all of you, I want you to know I'm as tragically puzzled by these events as you are. No, there's no doubt about it. He's the killer, that Fink! You must not make hasty accusations, Mrs. Callahan. A terrible crime has been committed. The police on the mainland must be notified. I'll do it at once. Yeah, you're going to do it. Are you all right, Beth? Come on. You look like you could use some fresh air. Nobody hated her enough to do that. No. Not like that. Don't worry, Mr. Demarest. We're in a place like this. At least you can say your hunch was right. Are you feeling a little better now? Yes. I'm all right.
friends, I regret to inform you that uh, the telephone line to the mainland seems to be out of order. We'll have to wait. No telephone? But the ferry isn't due back till late tomorrow afternoon. We may all be... Hello. Hello. I'm not being taken in by your lies. Murderer? You tell her, Baron, I'm no murderer. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> He's not kidding me. Well, I hope you're satisfied, Mr. Moss. The line was dead. You were right. My apologies for doubting your word. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. I couldn't be the murderer. None of us could have done it. Why do you say that, Mr. That Devers? car. Why, all the doors were locked. Only one window was open just a few inches, yet he wasn't killed by a bullet or any other missile. Don't you see? No man could have killed him. A vampire could. Did you say a vampire? Yes. Why not? Demaris is right. The window in our room has a 50-foot sheer cliff outside, with no way for anybody to climb but a bat. Surely, Mr. Robinson, you don't believe that. There was no blood in the body, Baron. And the driver of the car told us yesterday that everybody left this island because of a vampire legend. He, he said no one wanted to stay here except you, Baron. And I thought I was living in the 20th century. Just a moment, Baron. I don't believe in vampires. But the people did leave the island, true? Yes, of course. Why? Why? Because they actually thought there was a vampire. And there was. There was not. Some animals were found with very little blood in their bodies. Could have been a disease similar to leukemia. I tried to explain this to the fools, but they preferred to believe the old vampire legend. So they frightened themselves away, you see. And that's what happened. How did the murderer get through those windows? That's what I want to know. <laughs> but you can't deny no, it. They... Their bodies were also drained of blood. A vampire, that's what you are. But you won't get this old lady. Whether well, or not there is a vampire, murder has been committed. Yeah, exactly. Why are we sitting around here like this? It was a vampire. It's not scientific, but it is. Quiet. 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 It's not up to us to solve the murders. The point is that the murderer, whoever or whatever he is, is still at large. The telephone's dead, so we can't call the police. The ferry won't be here until tomorrow. Now, what we have to do is concentrate all our efforts on figuring out a way to get off this island. Baron? Yes, Mr. Moss? Do you have a boat? I do, Mr. Moss. We have a motor launch that we use for emergency trips to the mainland. It's at the dock. Well, what are we waiting for? It hasn't been used for some time. It may need fuel or water. All right, you and I can take care of that. And the others can be packing their things. Whatever you say, Mr. Moss. Be careful, David. Excuses. We'll be we'll back, be back in a little while. Tell me, do you have a car, Baron? No, there's always Alfredo's, of course. Well, how do you usually get around the island? Bicycles. There are several behind the villa, Mr. Moss. By the way, what's been done with the bodies? Uh, lacking a morgue, I had Baldi put them in the family vault. There's the boat, Mr. Moss. That? I'm afraid so. How do you explain that? Apparently, the killer didn't want us to leave the island, so he scuttled the boat. Yes, apparently. <laughs> no pictures to be taken in the house. But when the cat's not home, the mouse will roam. What's the matter? Why so sad? Aren't we all about to take a ride to the mainland and live happily ever after? Yeah, sure we are. So never mind, kids, it's a fine day. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm going outside to take some more pictures. Uh, do you think it's wise to leave the villa, Mrs. Callahan? With characters like you inside, I can tell you it's much safer to be on the outside. But you shouldn't be alone. Let me come with you. Okay, if you want to. So Call along. us at David and the Baron. Come back while we're outside. See you guys.
सकती है Look, no point in it all, you know. Look for who? David? Why not? If not David, oh. who else? It's really a shame. You and that fine young fella, too. I do wish you'd stop being so mysterious. I got some really great shots in the garden this morning. Oh, look, aren't they marvelous? Oh. Come on. All right, wait for me. I'm coming, wait. Oh. Oh. that we'll never get to see these pictures. Will you tell me what you're talking about? Why, death. Death is what I meant. Death. What do you mean? Who's death? Mrs. Robbins? The drivers? Who? My dear, there's no escaping it. You know, none of us is going to leave this island. You'll die before we are rescued, and we'll all be killed except that Denver's character. Me, I'm not important. Who's going to cry over the likes of me? No one. I just wonder who the next victim will be. Stop it, Myrtle. Please. Pity that such a nice young pair like you and David should have to die. And in such a horrible way, too. Beth, where are you going? Beth, come back here. <laughs> down. You hear me? That will do you no good, Mr. Moss. Baldi takes orders only from me. I advise you not to use force. He is abnormally strong. Tell him then, Baron. 
Tell him. Of course. Uh, put the lady down, Baldi. Here. What happened? I would say Miss Christensen is not in any serious condition. Probably only fainted. What have you done to her? Answer me. He cannot tell you, Mr. Moss. Although he hears and understands you, Baldi is a mute. I swear if he's hurt her, he'll pay. you get out of here, you guys. This poor creature obviously needs a bath, clean clothes, and a good rest. Shouldn't we be leaving? Is the boat here yet? Isn't it, David? We can't use the boat. Someone scuttled it. Oh, no. <laughs> but don't worry. We'll manage fine. You won't be far away. Oh, please, please. <laughs> All right. Just rest. Send Myrtle for me if you want me, Beth. Mr. Moss. Mr. Demarest? You surely can't be serious. But, but I am, Pat. I have proof. An exciting plant, huh? The fabric, the texture. A very interesting plant. You mean you believe that one of my experiments got out of control and is responsible for these deaths? I have seen it with my own eyes. I realize, of course, that you are unaware of the deadly potential of this. But you have so many experiments. One man couldn't possibly keep track of them all. Well, Mr. Demarest, we are both scientists, are we not? <sighs> the scientists must have proof. Do you mind showing me your proof? Yes, of course, Baron. I'll show you the carcass. It's bloodless like the others. This explains everything. I can see now why the vampire legend started when those other animals were found. I can take a leave of absence from my university. We can work on this together. An interesting proposition. Interesting? It's more than that, Baron. We'll make botanical history here. You really think so? I'm sure of it. 
We'll write books about your work yet, so the world will learn of your genius. Just a minute, Mr. Demarest. If there's one thing wrong with your theory, I don't want books written about my experiments. You don't? No, I don't want publicity. I don't want the world to know of my genius. And in addition, you were wrong, Mr. Demarest, about my experiments being out of control. I'm never out of control. Never. You killed those people? You? What's wrong? Ask Baldy. Put him down, Baldy. Mr. Demarest. Here's the murderer, Baron. I caught him lugging his latest victim away with him into the woods. He must have scuttled the launch and cut the telephone wires. Who else could have done it? Oh, the evidence seems quite conclusive. Hard to believe. But why? Your brother. Why did you do it? We better lock him up until the police get here. I agree. I regret this, Valdi, but you'll have to be taken into custody. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moss. Who 
We'll be on top of him in a minute. He's gone. Drive on, please, Mr. Moss. Wait, stop. I think he may have turned up this part. His brother's there. But he's dead. Yes, but Baldi's mind is unbalanced. He will seek the only person who represents security to him, and that's his brother. Dead or not, it's this way. Come on. Here somewhere. Well, there, Mr. Noss. In there. He's a maniac. Look out! Thank you, Mr. Moss.
There's a great storm brewing, but it's still at a distance. I doubt it'll start raining right away. You know, I think I've taken, I'd say, a thousand shots, and there's still one I can never get. I've tried over and over without any results. No get it tonight, I'm gonna do it. A picture by a flash of lightning. You're going outside? Why, of course. Oh, how worry is it done with it? And he said, now that Baldi and them is to die, I feel... What about the storm? Oh, I'll take a picture of some pretty things around the villa and I'll return soon enough. Don't worry about me, I'll be okay. She's great. What happened to Myrtle? She should be back by now. You know what a nut she is about cameras. Well, I hope she's all right. Don't worry. That old girl can take care of herself. Seemed like a good night for one. Where's Mrs. Cullen? She went out. Oh, what for? She wanted to take some pictures. To take pictures? Tonight? Yes, yeah, she's been out now about ten minutes. What a really droll idea. Well, she may have gone to her room, but we didn't hear her come in. I'll go up and check on her. 
It has been an exhausting day. A horrible day. There's something that I don't understand. What is that, Mr. Moss? Why did Baldi's brother mention arms just before he died? Hmm? Uh, that statue there. My Siva. Could be that. But statues don't kill, do they, Mr. Moss? You know all that goes on here, and yet you claim not to know what Baldi was doing. You know, I can't believe that. That's your privilege, Mr. Moss. It's just the wind. I'll fix it. This whole affair has cost too many deaths to shrug off, Baron. I never thought the country. I'll be right back.
It's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.